What's up everybody, it's Charles. Today we are talking about voltage drop testing. What is a voltage drop test? How do we do it? Why do we do it? And why is it really better than doing anything else like a resistance check? As you can see, I got my demo board right back here, so we're gonna use this so I can show you exactly how and why you wanna do a volt drop test. First, we really need to understand what the heck a volt drop even is. And like so many things, it tells you exactly what it is in the name. It is a loss or a drop of voltage through a circuit due to effective resistance. Now, sometimes this is a good thing. The voltage drop or the voltage loss on this light bulb, for example, is why it turns on. Or it can be a bad thing. Corrosion, connectivity problems at a connector, pinched wires, you name it all can cause a drop in voltage. If we're concerned about a wiring problem though, why do we even need to mess around with volt drop this or volt drop that? Why don't we just check resistance of the wire? Well, resistance doesn't tell the entire story. As you can see this wire here, I think we can all agree that if this were in an actual automotive application, this would not be a wire that would be good. Plus, when you're checking resistance, you're checking it with the circuit off. So you're checking it in a static position, right? What we really want to do is we want to be testing these circuits, how they're operating, or more likely how they're not operating, and test it with the component on, dynamically. So when we look at resistance of this wire, we're checking it with the light off and the wire unplugged. When we're checking things like volt drop, we're checking it with the bulb on and the way it would be functioning if it were functioning properly. You can do a volt drop test on any wire, even stuff that zip tied to a piece of pegboard. But the most common place that we really see volt drop tests done are going to be in on the automotive application anyway, on starting and charging system tests. At least in my experience, that's the place where I've seen the most problems with high resistance in a wire is in things like starter cables, alternator cables, and even battery ground cables. All right, real quick, let's talk about our board. We have a vehicle battery here off to the left a maintainer right behind the board, and one multimeter monitoring voltage of this battery. This is actually out of my GTI. Moving on, we have our power supply into a fuse block. So this will be for our top bulb. This is for our bottom bulb. We then come to a switch for each light. That'll allow us to turn them on and off. And then just a wire over to the light bulb. On the bottom, same thing, fuse to a switch. And then we have where I have taken this wire and cut all but two strands. So there's only two tiny strands of wire connecting from the switch to the bulb. And as you can see, it still works. All right, let's start off by doing a quick resistance check of this wire so I can show you exactly why resistance checks may not be that good. First, we'll move our meter to ohms. We'll do a quick test of our leads. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll just check resistance of the wire. Now, if I checked a wire and saw 0.2 ohms, 0.3 ohms, I'd be okay with that. We would probably call this a good wire, but I think we can all agree that having two strands only connected in a wire does nothing really but create a fusible link from the switch to the light bulb. So if we were to check this circuit statically like it sits with resistance, we would call that wire good. So when I think about voltage and doing testing like this, I think about voltage in a little bit different way. I think about it as a difference or a difference in potential. So what is my potential that this lead sees versus what this lead sees? And doing it that way makes understanding what a volt drop is and how to do it, to me, quite a bit easier. So let's switch our meter to DC volts. We'll put one lead on the ground connection and we'll put one lead on the power side for the fuse. 14.5 volts, which matches pretty close to what our vehicle battery has, because remember, I have it on a charger. As I move through the circuit, I may see different voltage readings. Let's go ahead and turn our bulb on. So there's a voltage loss because, well, I have the bulb on, and then here. Now I can do it this way, and this is doing the test, but it's taking quite a bit longer. So what I'll do is I'll check the voltage drop from this connection to this connection. We'll put one of our leads here, one on the other side, and you can see the difference in voltage potential or voltage pressure is going to be 0.26, we'll call it 0.26 volts. Now, while that seemingly operates that bulb just fine, it's only a matter of time and heat cycling and movement before this wire will probably break. 
We can also leave it on long enough and it'll get hot enough where it'll separate that way. Now 0.26 volts starts to become borderline for me anyway on a wire this size. If this were an alternator cable, I usually start replacing at like half a volt drop, but even still 0.3 volts is enough to make components start to act funny. What if this wasn't a lighting circuit? What if this was a five volt reference circuit and you had that 0.25 volt drop? It's a considerably higher percentage of overall voltage than it is on a 12 volt circuit. Let's compare that to our bulb at the top. Go to ground, 12.3 volts. We got a bit of a volt drop across the switch, but we're pretty much no voltage drop across our wire. 0 0.013 volts, not enough to really impact that bulb in any meaningful way. And we could probably even reduce that by doing a different connection this I just put together so that we were able to actually get on the wires without piercing the sheathing. So here you can see we can do a resistance check and it's good. Resistance is good, 0.2 ohms, because we have two strands connected. And then once we start to load the circuit, which is what we're doing when we're putting the bulb in, when we load the circuit and check it, we see a pretty high loss of voltage. Now this is the way I've pretty much done this professionally using multimeter, just plain old leads and going and doing volt drop tests that way. But I can't do a volt drop test without talking about something like the Load Pro or other equivalent tools. This is interesting because let's say we were trying to check the volt drop over here, we would have to get behind the bulb and back probe it. Remember, we have to have the circuit on in order to do this test. Something like this actually replaces the load in the circuit and forces the drop. So we'll disconnect our leads from our multimeter, plug in our load pro. We're still checking DC voltage, so we're gonna leave it there. We'll come on this side, disconnect the bulb, and here we're gonna check the entire circuit. So first we'll turn it on. We'll do our positive lead in the positive connector, negative lead on the negative side. We got 12.77 volts. We know we have power and we know we have ground, so we don't have an open circuit and we don't have a short to ground. We hit the button on the load pro, it loads the circuit and we can see our drop. This is not putting nearly as much load as the bulb is, but even still, we see that drop. So something like this is cool because you don't have to get behind the component in order to test it. You can just disconnect it and go right into the connector directly at the component. Although if you're testing a component in a car, don't do it the way I did it and just jam the leads Get some uh, adapters and use those. You don't want to mess up the pins inside of a connector and cause a problem that didn't exist before. So to sum it up, we wanna have our load turned on. We're going to take one of our meter leads on one side of the circuit we're trying to test. So this could be connector to connector and our other lead on the other side. And the reading that we get is our voltage drop or how much voltage potential is lost through the circuit between where we have our meter leads. So we're only testing this small section of wire. We could also do the same thing for our switch, or our fuse, or our load itself. And you'll see that that's pretty much all the voltage that we're losing because our bulb is working. So guys, that's pretty much it. The hardest part is turning the circuit on and getting access to the point where you would test at the component. So for us, it would be either back probing the light bulb socket or using something like the load pro tester to test it that way. This can be done on the positive side, this can be done on the ground side. In fact, volt drops on the ground side usually cause weirder problems than volt drops on the power side. Volt drops on the positive side can be things like uh, the component doesn't work at all or the bulb is super dim. Ground side can cause really weird squirrely issues, including the ones I just mentioned. All right, there you saw in action just how a wire can look good but not actually be good. Guys, this is all there is to doing a volt drop test. I know it sounds scary, I know it sounds hard, I have to turn the component on, I need to replace my meter with the load, all those things, I don't even understand what a load is, but seriously, doing a volt drop test is this easy. It's far better of a test, you're testing the circuit dynamically, not just turned off, which is a far better way to test this in my opinion, and probably the opinion of many other people out there. With that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Questions, comments, drop them down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you guys like this video, uh, or want to do more with this cool board, drop that down in the comments too. Let me know. This was fun to make. And it's fun to play around with, and uh, it'd be great to get some more video usage out of it. So let me know what you think. Guys, with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day. Best of luck. Happy volt dropping. And I'll talk to you again next time.